vital to military operations are the horse and the mule. Mechanization has by no means eliminated these valuable animals. Under certain conditions, they are indispensable. Like men, they must be protected from war gases by means of specially designed gas masks, which supply fresh, filtered air free of chemical agents. There are two types of gas masks for horses and mules. The M4 has a canister on each side, one on the left shoulder and one on the right. The M5 mask has this difference. Both canisters are on the right or off side of the horse. The weight of the canisters balances the rifle on the left or near side. In order to show clearly how the M4 mask is adjusted to carry position, the steps will be taken slowly. Face the horse on the near side, just in front of the saddle. Holding the mask by the neck strap so that the muzzle piece carrier flap is away from the horse. Unsnap the neck strap from the left canister and take the left pommel strap in the right hand. Now engage the snap of the left pommel strap into the pommel ring. Cross under the horse's neck to the other side. Engage the snap of the right pommel strap into the right pommel ring. Then place the neck strap over the neck. Cross back to the other side. Engage the snap into the top ring of the left canister. Next, with this type of saddle, fasten the left side strap around the girth. On the unmodified McClellan saddle, the side strap is fastened to the spider ring. Then pass the girth strap between the forelegs and fasten it to the girth. If necessary, the girth may be loosened or left loose at the time of saddling. Fasten the right side strap, and if the girth was loosened, cinch it. The M4 mask is now at carry position. When an animal is being fitted with the M4 mask for the first time, all straps must be adjusted to fit the conformation of the particular animal. Adjust the pommel straps to take most of the weight of the canister to the saddle. Leave a minimum of tension on the neck pad. Adjust the girth strap and shoulder straps so that the muzzle piece carrier rests lightly against the horse's breast, which limits the movement of the carrier and canisters and allows proper freedom of the neck and shoulders while the animal is in motion. These are the steps taken to adjust the M5 mask. Place the canisters on the horse in front of the saddle and engage the snap of the right pommel strap into the pommel ring on the off side. Then fasten the center pommel strap to a special ring which has been attached to the pommel by means of a small strap. This special ring and strap are always kept on the saddle when the mask is in frequent use. But if the mask is to be stored for any length of time, remove the ring and strap and attach them to the center pommel strap. Now fasten the side strap to the girth.
pass in front of the animal and engage the snap of the left pommel strap to the ring on the near side of the saddle. Then adjust the girth strap as on the M4 mask. As on the M4 mask, all straps are adjusted to fit the animal. When using the M5 mask, take particular care to place the canister carrier sufficiently forward to avoid striking or rubbing the knee. In a gas attack, after first adjusting your own mask, unfasten the carrier flap and remove the muzzle piece. Check the hose to see that there are no twists and pull out the muzzle piece straps. Then grasping the top of the muzzle piece in the left hand and holding it on top of the nose, stretch the aperture with the right hand, pulling the mask up over the lower jaw. Then slip the muzzle piece straps under the nose band of the halter and the cheek strap of the bridle and snap them into the halter rings on both sides. The muzzle piece should not restrict the horse's nostrils. As soon as the nostrils are covered, the horse is protected. Finally, check for proper fit of the muzzle piece and make certain that there are no kinks in the hose. Snap the hose support around the throat strap of the halter. Snap the muzzle piece carrier flap to keep it closed tight against contamination, but do not let it pinch the hose. If the left web strap in the carrier chokes the hose, unfasten it. In taking off the muzzle piece, Unfasten the carrier flap and tuck it over the top. Then unfasten the hose support from the throat halter strap. Unsnap the muzzle piece straps, pulling them free of the cheek and nose straps. Remove the muzzle piece by grasping the upper end and pulling it down from the horse's head. Do not pull the hose. Place the straps in the aperture. Fold the hose over the muzzle piece. Grasp both with the right hand near the hose connection and place them in the carrier with the outlet valve on the near side and the hose on top. Fasten the center snap first, then the others. In removing the M4 mask, disengage the girth strap, then the right side strap, the left side strap, the neck strap from the left canister, and the left pommel strap. Then holding the canister with the right hand, unsnap the right pommel strap. Finally, snap the neck strap to the left canister. When it is not in use, place the mask in the troop storeroom. Hang it up off the floor by placing the neck strap over a peg with the carrier flap facing the wall. Remove the muzzle piece from the carrier and placing it between the two canisters with the aperture facing away from the wall, snap the pommel straps to the muzzle rings. In removing the M5 mask, First, disengage the girth strap, then the left pommel strap,
the right side strap, the center pommel strap, and the right pommel strap. Then fasten the snap of the center pommel strap to the snap of the left pommel strap. Hang the M5 mast by placing the loop of the right pommel strap over the peg and connecting the left pommel strap to the upper ring on the right canister. Then hang the muzzle piece by its left strap over the peg so that the aperture faces the wall. It is often necessary to make adjustments in the mask as to size of aperture and length of hose. Such changes should be made only in extreme cases when absolutely necessary and should be supervised by an officer. In pack battalions, it may be necessary to shorten the hoses to improve the adjustment on smaller animals. To do this, cut at the point indicated by the officer. Remove the tape and wire. Then replace the hose. Refasten the wire to make an airtight connection. For large field artillery horses, increase the length of the muzzle piece aperture by cutting on the line which is already embossed on the lower part of the aperture. In putting on the muzzle piece, grasp the top in the left hand and hook the fingers over the halter nose band. Insert the fingers of the right hand in the lower part of the aperture and stretching it, pull the muzzle piece up under the lower jaw while the left hand keeps it up on top of the nose. For very large horses, it may be necessary to cut 1 16th of an inch or more outside of the existing aperture. To ensure a clean and serviceable mask at all times, pay constant attention to the condition of the mask. In combat zones, animals are difficult to replace. Their care and protection is of the utmost military importance. Organization commanders will inspect the equipment frequently to make sure each man is giving his mount the protection it must have. Frequent drills accustom troops and animals to the use of the horse gas mask. The men are also trained to adjust the mask at night without artificial light. It is important to remember that the trooper always adjusts his own mask before putting the mask on the horse. It is necessary that animals be given frequent practice while wearing the mask. And during these drills, they should be worked at various gates for reasonable periods of time.
gas mask gives the animals adequate protection against chemical warfare and does not seriously reduce their military usefulness. All organizations that use animals in areas where gas attacks may occur will find the horse gas mask indispensable. present, your training has had one main purpose, to acquaint you thoroughly with your horse and your weapons. Under your squad leaders, you perfected yourselves in squad drill to the point we are now ready to become part of the platoon team with me. And once you become an integral part of the platoon, you'll be cavalrymen in the fullest sense of the word. The cavalry field manual, FM 2-5, represents many years experience with mounted troops. The formations prescribed in this manual are the ABCs for cavalry. Now, courage alone won't win wars today. In modern warfare, the trooper who learns to cooperate with his comrades is the one the enemy dreads most. Of course, you're not expected to learn all about drill from studying this manual, because you'll have plenty of practice under supervision. Nevertheless, I recommend that you make this your drill bible and guide. The Cavalry Rifle Platoon is a subdivision of a troop and consists of three squads and a platoon headquarters. The platoon leader, the sergeant file closer, the intelligence scout who also acts as a messenger, the platoon sergeant, and the second intelligence scout form the platoon headquarters. These four men assist the platoon leader in the control of the platoon. The platoon leader and the platoon sergeant are armed with automatic pistols. The remaining enlisted men are armed with both rifle and pistol. Each squad consists of a corporal, who is the squad leader, and seven privates. In line, the squad leader is in the center and is number one of the left set of fours. This set of fours consists of the corporal, the scout, Rifleman, who acts as horse holder when lead horses are left mobile, and rifleman. The set of fours to the right of the corporal consists of the second in command, the scout, the rifleman horse holder, and rifleman. The platoon drill is divided into close order formations and extended order formations. A close order formation, like a column of troopers, for example, would be used on narrow mountain trails. Or, when conditions permit it, we can move in column of twos, which is an easily controlled formation for moving along narrow roads. Here is another close order formation, column of fours. These close order formations teach the men to work in unison and give the officers better control over the unit. Notice the squads are in column with a normal distance of four feet from head to croup. That is, four feet from the heads of the horses of this set of fours to the tails of the horses of this set of fours. Extended order formations are used in combat. 
when enemy fire is likely, an extended order formation such as this would be used to present as poor a target as possible when crossing open ground. When the platoon is extended in depth, the squads follow each other at the ordered distance. The squads take the formation ordered. These squads are in flock formation with 50 yards distance between squads. Now the platoon is in column of squads at 25 yards distance and the squads are in half squad columns with normal intervals of 25 yards. Or the platoon may be extended laterally with intervals prescribed by the platoon leader. Here the platoon is in line of half squad columns with 15 yard intervals. And now the platoon is in line of squad columns with intervals of 25 yards. With the platoon extended either laterally or in depth, squads may be in any prescribed formation. Variations of any extended order formation may be affected by the platoon leader causing the base squad to change its formation. The other squad leaders then change the formation of their squads to conform to that of the base squad. As foragers! As foragers! This type of lateral extension is also an extended order formation in which the squads, each deployed as foragers, are abreast of each other with the same intervals between squads as between troopers. The formation called foragers has a minimum interval of five yards between troopers. The troopers know their places in all formations because they either follow or dress on a guide or a leader. For example, when a platoon is in line, all troopers in the rank regulate on the guide of the platoon, who is also the guide of the base or center squad. In this extended order formation, the troopers in each squad regulate on their squad leader, who in turn regulates on the base squad. In column formations, such as column of fours, the guide is habitually right, or the number one trooper in each set of fours. All of you will have the opportunity to act as a guide so that you'll better understand what is expected of you. The guide must be alert because each trooper dresses on or follows the guide of his set of fours, squad or platoon. So far, we've discussed the organization and equipment of the platoon. Now we'll see how the various formations are formed and how the drill is carried out. In forming, the platoon sergeant rides out and faces the position where he wants the platoon to form. Form, platoon! Squad, lead in the line. Second squad, lead in the line. Third squad, lead in the line. The base squad leader halts six yards from the platoon sergeant. The other two squads lead into line, taking up positions on either side of the base squad. Count four. One, two, three, four. Second squad, count four. One, two, three, four. Third squad, count four. One, two, three, four. Report. Third squad, all prisoners count four. First squad, all prisoner count four. Second squad, all prisoner count four. The platoon sergeant verifies the presence of the file closer sergeant and the two messengers. Sir, the platoon is present and accounted for. Post. The platoon sergeant takes his post in the rear of the leader of the base squad. The 
Spread them out. The odd numbers lead out four yards directly to the front. All troopers place their rifles in their scabbards and take the position of prepare to mount. This is not a precision movement, but smoothness and quietness are required. The platoon mounts in unison. The platoon leader places himself three yards in front of the corporal of the base squad. In platoon drill, any formation may be taken from any other. Column of troopers, twos or fours, is habitually formed on the base or center squad, which moves out first. Column of fours. Oh. The base or center squad is first in column, followed by the squad on left of the base squad, and last by the squad on the right of the base squad. In forming column of fours from line, squad leaders conduct their squads by the shortest and most direct route to their positions in the column at the order gate of march and without loss of distance. Line. Line is habitually formed by a fan-shaped deployment on the leading element or squad. At the command of execution, the leading squad forms line and follows the platoon leader, its guide or squad leader following the platoon leader at three yards distance. The second squad is conducted by its squad leader at an increased gate to the left front. And the third squad is conducted in a similar manner to the right front. The squads continue in their original formation until their leading elements, which are the first sets of fours, are about three yards in rear of their correct place in the platoon line. When they form line to the front, the leading sets of fours reduce the gate gradually so as to avoid blocking the movements of the second sets of fours, and so as to have the gate of the base squad when they arrive on line. When a line is to be formed in a new direction, and there is neither time nor room for changing the direction of the march, line may be formed by commanding fours right or fours left. Fours right. Oh. Each set of fours wheels toward the new direction. This movement is used for short changes of direction only. The platoon being in column or in line may be extended in depth and in any formation. Column of squads in line a half squad column at 25 yards. Trot. Ho. Oh. The base squad moves out first taking up the formation ordered. Squad leaders give the necessary commands and conduct their squads to their ordered position in the column and follow at the designated distance. Likewise, the platoon may be extended laterally and in any formation. Line of squad columns, 25 yards. Oh. 
At the squad leader's command, the base squad follows the platoon leader in column of troopers. Other squads are conducted by their squad leaders to positions abreast of the base squad at the designated interval and conform to the formation of the base squad. The squads habitually take the formation of and regulate on the base squad. Distances and intervals other than normal must be announced orally. These formations are used to cross fire swept areas, pass over difficult terrain, or approach the line of departure for combat, either mounted or dismounted. Line of flock. When a platoon leader orders the base squad to change to flock, the other squad leaders give the necessary commands to their squads to conform to the formation of the base squad. Normally, the interval between squads would be greater than is pictured here. When the squads are extended laterally, the troopers regulate on their own squad leaders. Note the flexibility of these extended formations and the ease with which the changes in the formations are made. Being in any formation, such as column of fours, a platoon leader may disperse the platoon by commanding... Disperse by squad! The squad leaders lead their squads rapidly in different directions until they are at least 50 yards apart. This formation is generally used as a means of defense against air attack or to reduce casualties against artillery fire or as a means of defense against armored vehicle attack. To change formation quickly or to bring order out of confusion, the platoon leader rides in the desired direction and signals the desired formation. Symbol! Column of fours! The squad leaders move toward the platoon leader and the squads form rapidly on their squad leaders during movement. The squad arriving near the platoon leader first becomes the base squad of the new formation. Being in any formation to form as foragers, the platoon leader commands as foragers. As foragers! Ho! The base squad follows the platoon leader, and the squad leader deploys it immediately. The leaders of the other squads conduct them at an increased gate to left and right front to gain the interval necessary to permit their deployment. Upon arriving opposite their positions in the line of foragers and after changing direction so as to march to the front, the flanking squads are deployed and move up abreast of the base squad. Troopers regulate their march on their own squad leader, who in turn regulates on the base squad. When in the formation as foragers, to march to the rear, the platoon reverses its direction of march by executing troopers left about. Troopers left about! Ho! However, if the platoon is in column of fours, it usually marches to the rear by executing column left about or column right about. Note that the squads remain in their original order. When the platoon is in column of fours, it may change direction to the rear quickly by executing fours left about. Fours left about. 
This changes the order of the squads within the platoon and of the sets of fours within the squads. This movement is used for short changes of direction only. The platoon in line may march to the rear by executing two left turns. Left turn! Oh! Squads remain in their original order, the guide merely following the platoon leader and the troopers dressing on the guide. This is a movement primarily for drill purposes to teach precision. It can be performed with or without oral command. When more speed is required, or when there is not sufficient room to wheel the entire platoon, it may change direction to the rear by executing fours right or left about. Fours left about. Ho! Oh. This maneuver changes the order of squads within the platoon and of the sets of fours within the squads. This movement also is used for short changes of direction only. Commands for extended order formation sometimes may be very brief. As fighters, Christmas we'll attack, follow me! At this command, the men shorten their reins, raise pistols, and ride at a collected gallop toward the enemy. The leader of the base squad moves up on the left of the platoon leader, while the two messengers are absorbed in the rank. The platoon and file closer sergeants follow in the rear to prevent straggling. When within about 60 yards, the platoon leader commands charge. After the completion of a mounted attack, the platoon may be quickly assembled by the platoon leader signaling and commanding rally. Rally! When in disorder, all troopers ride at a rapid gait toward the platoon leader and form behind him in line in any order. At the first suitable opportunity, the platoon leader causes fours to be counted. The mounted attack is suited for surprise action against small groups which are not organized for defense. However, the principal combat action for cavalry is to use its horses to move quickly to an area from which it can attack dismounted. For the purpose of demonstration, the following dismounted action is shown in open terrain. The platoon leader signals and commands fight on foot. If the action is to take place to the front, the platoon leader signals and commands action front. The platoon leader dismounts and turns his horse over to the file closer sergeant. He then announces the formation desired and directs the disposition of the lead horses. Each squad dismounts and the squad leaders dispose their squads as indicated by the platoon leader. The platoon sergeant and messengers dismount and secure their horses to nearby sets of fours. At this time, the platoon leader directs a scout to move out from each squad. The messengers join the platoon leader and the platoon sergeant takes charge of the platoon. The file closer sergeant takes care of the lead horses and disposes of them as directed by the platoon leader. Bring up the lead horses! Bring up the lead horses! Lead horses, follow me! When going out of dismounted action, the platoon may be mounted by having the lead horses brought forward or by moving the dismounted men toward the horses. To have the lead horses brought forward, the platoon leader signals or sends word to the file closer sergeant. The lead horses are brought forward to the vicinity of their squads, and the platoon leader then gives the command to stand a horse or mount. If the lead horses are to be left immobile, this may be accomplished by having squads link in couples. Link in couples.
or by linking in a circle, as this squad is doing. Link in circle. Stay with the horses. Circle horses! Or one horse holder in each squad can hold the horses of his squad. Ludman, you stay with the horses. In any case, the file closer sergeant or a designated trooper is left in charge. Cavalry is organized primarily to perform missions requiring great mobility and firepower. With training and teamwork, your platoon will be fully capable of performing these missions in combat. job is to kill our enemy without being killed. To do this, we must prevent the enemy from surprising us. Protection against surprise, annoyance, and observation is called security. First, we'll take up security. The time to learn about security is now, and not later when you're on the battlefield. In all combat operations, the leaders protect our units from surprise by keeping small organized groups called security detachments between the command and the enemy. Corporal, you will take your half squad out as an advance guard. You know the route of march. We will regulate on you. Rate of march, five miles an hour. This set of fours, column of twos, 10 yards, follow me. There will come a time when you will be responsible for protecting your outfit against a surprise attack or ambush. Therefore, you must be familiar with security measures. An advance guard of half a squad is normally sufficient to guard against surprise from the front, while the maximum fighting strength of platoon is retained. The advance guard will precede the main body by from 200 to 500 yards, depending upon terrain. The right flank patrol, move out onto that high ground. Left flank patrol, move out onto that high ground. When you're sent out to the flank like this, you are called a flank patrol. Even though you might be the first person killed, it's your job to prevent enemy riflemen or machine gunners from surprising the main body. The type of country, weather, time of day, and enemy activity will help to determine the distance you will ride to the flank. It may be unnecessary to detach flank guards or patrols when the unit's flanks are protected by the presence of friendly troops. Of Levin! Take three men and form the rear guard. Follow the platoon at two to five hundred yards. Yes, sir. Forward! Forward! Oh!
Security must be continuous in every direction. Towards the front, flanks and rear, security on the ground, and lookouts to warn of air attack. In other words, all around security. This rear guard will follow at about 200 to 500 yards to prevent straggling and guard the platoon against surprise. When the main body is advancing toward an enemy, the rear guard is usually smaller than the advance guard. If, on the other hand, the main body is retiring, the rear guard must be greatly strengthened in order for it to fight a successful delaying action. A fact to remember is that the rear guards and the advance guards are employed when the main body is not ready for immediate action. Our security may also be maintained by other methods. At other times, you will protect your unit by being a member of a covering detachment. A covering detachment moves in a wide screening formation to protect a cross-country movement. A covering detachment is a security detachment used to protect the movement of the unit in the presence of the enemy. It is employed when moving cross-country when combat is imminent and when the main body is prepared for immediate action. A covering detachments are also necessary prior to dismounted action. Whether you're moving or halted, you are never safe from air attack. You can provide a certain amount of security for yourselves by dispersing with sufficient interval and distance between troopers. While others are resting and adjusting their equipment, you may be an air scout, which means that you will station yourself on a high point that affords good all-around observation. But don't be a flagpole. There may be enemy ground observers, too. Although everyone is on the lookout for enemy planes, it is your job as an air scout to be well trained in the identification of enemy planes so as to give timely warning of their approach. Be sure you are up high enough so that you can detect low-flying planes. However, don't expose yourself on the skyline. For this will not only make you a good target for an enemy scout or sniper, but will also betray the presence of your own outfit. leader gives the command to fire, let them have it with all you've got. When you are moving across open country, you will offer a poor target for enemy planes by dispersing and marching in flock formation. In case you are attacked, only a few of you may be hit. However, the best means of protection against attack or observation by enemy planes is to take advantage of concealment offered by trees, buildings, and shadows. This will not only protect you from enemy airplanes, but from enemy ground observers as well. When you are a member of an advanced guard, such as this, you will move habitually by bounds. Moving by bounds simply means that you will move from one position of good observation to the next. Or in other circumstances, you might move from one position of cover or concealment to the next. Sometimes crossroads or road junctions are selected for the limit of a bound. At the end of each bound, and after you have made an all-around observation and have sighted no enemy, the next critical point is designated. The length of each bound varies with the size of the unit you are protecting and the type of country over which you are moving. In any case, your action must allow the main body which you are protecting to move at a steady rate of march. Selection of bounds is also dependent on the route of march. For example, if the direction of march is along this road, suitable terrain features for critical points would be this crossroad and these ridges. Your movement should be made under cover whenever practicable. Your chances of getting killed would be less if you followed this line of trees instead of the open road.
When you are moving forward to a position from which you will dismount to fight, take advantage of terrain which will conceal you from enemy observation and which will protect you from enemy fire. Go down and tell the platoon sergeant to bring the platoon forward dismounted. Leave the lead horses in that draw under those trees. Yes, sir. Whenever possible, dismount in a concealed position. Don't bunch your horses. Instead, scatter the sets of fours. Try to conceal your horses in places where they will not be killed by fire directed at you. Without them, your transportation and battlefield mobility are gone. When your platoon is to launch an attack in conjunction with other platoons of the troop, certain methods must be employed to coordinate the attack. <coughs> Ordinarily, some prearranged signal, such as this rocket, will be used. Such signals are often used to coordinate attacks of widely separated units. You must not only be on the alert for them, but you must also watch your own leader for other signals. Don't get caught with your pants down. When your outfit moves out, it will move out fast. Under other circumstances, you may be a messenger and the troop commander will use you to coordinate the attack by delivering a message to one of the platoon leaders. Whether the message is written or not, know its contents by heart. Don't get captured or killed, but deliver that message and deliver it on time. An intelligent man on a horse is one of the surest and quickest means of delivering a message on the battlefield. Sir, a message from the troop commander. No reply. Mount and report back to the troop commander. Return, sergeant. Whether you're a general or a private, don't launch an attack without first making a personal reconnaissance to verify and complete your information regarding the enemy. Personal reconnaissance means that you move to a vantage point where you can take a personal view of the enemy and terrain. You might do this as a squad leader, or you might take the same action as a scout or a sniper. There's a mounted patrol over there. Depending on the situation, your reconnaissance may be limited to a hasty glance at the enemy and terrain. But it should be as thorough as the time permits. You may not have trees or bushes to conceal your presence from the enemy. However, grass or a rise of ground will serve the purpose. There's an enemy patrol out there. The troop commander's message asks for identification of the enemy. We will attack mounted at once. Very well, sir. After you have decided how you can best kill the enemy, let those under you know your plan of action. Coordinating the attack will help you to win the fight. In small units and in hasty action, when time is the important element, your order for the attack will be very brief. Squad leaders, over here! There's an enemy patrol over that ridge. First squad, as far as his pistol attack. Second squad, as far as his pistol attack at 100 yards. Third squad, as far as his pistol attack, follow me. Sergeant, lead the attack. Move out. No direction was announced because the man leading the attack was present at his leader's reconnaissance and discussed the plan with him. The platoon leader chose to lead the support squad so he could maneuver it to meet any counteraction by the enemy. He might have led the first wave. Remember, surprise the enemy and hit him hard with all you've got. Your rifle platoon may be employed either mounted or dismounted as a separate unit or as part of the troop. Your platoon is considered as acting alone whenever it is beyond the immediate support of other units. Here you see the advance guard of your platoon, 
which is acting alone on a combat mission. Notice how cautiously the leading man of the advance guard rides up and peers over the crest of the ridge. He has sighted the enemy. His signal indicates that the enemy force is small. Notice that the signal is relayed to the main body. After dismounting and turning over horses to a horse holder, the advance guard remains at the ridge in order to keep the enemy under observation. Here again, you see the leader riding forward to make his reconnaissance. In the meantime, your platoon will continue at a steady rate of march. The advance guard has not opened fire. You are in a position to make a surprise attack if the enemy outpost does not discover your presence. The platoon will attack up that draw. Rally and point will be that knoll over there. You will support the attack from this position after the platoon is exposed. You will assemble after the attack is launched. I will be with you at mounted attack. Yes, sir. The mounted attack may be used in exceptional circumstances. Favorable ground and weather conditions, complete surprise, or a disorganized or careless enemy may suggest mounted action. This is one of the exceptions. After careful reconnaissance, it appears that the enemy is not aware of your nearness, and you can surprise him. There's an enemy platoon dismounted just the other side of that ridge. We will move up that draw and attack from the left, mounted as foragers. Send me the other half of Evans's squad as a covering detachment. Normally, when attacking a force of mounted men or a force having depth, an attack in a series of waves should be made. However, when attacking a shallow objective, such as this dismounted patrol, it is better to attack with the entire platoon in a single wave. Even though your mounted attack will be launched immediately, you will still move under cover as close to the enemy as possible. This will give you the maximum amount of surprise. As you reach open ground, you immediately form foragers and drive home the attack. This time, the covering detachment splits and rides to the flanks to protect your own outfit from surprise and observation. Normally, you will commence the charge as soon as the enemy sees you. At the command, charge, close on the enemy at full speed. Unless you're an exceptionally good shot, you will not be able to hit until you're within 25 yards. Aim at an enemy soldier and shoot till he drops. The momentum of your charge will carry you through the enemy. It will be necessary for you to wheel your horses and enter the melee, firing your pistols at any survivors. A successful mounted attack is not an accident. It requires excellent teamwork of man, horse, and weapon. Notice in the distance the march outpost riding to a point where it will have good observation. Under the protection of your march outpost, search the prisoners promptly for maps, orders, or any documents that may be of value to the intelligence sections of your own troops. Enemy arms, horses, and equipment are collected to be picked up later by salvage parties. Prisoners will be escorted to the rear by a mounted guard. If practicable, use your own wounded as guards. Your platoon reorganizes immediately for further combat. Mounted attack was a quick method of meeting a special situation. More often, your platoon will fight dismounted with other platoons of your troops. Enemy fire from that ridge has stopped the advance of this platoon, which is the advance guard of your troop. Upon learning that the advance guard is unable to proceed any farther, your troop commander will issue orders to the platoon leaders for a dismounted attack. To illustrate more clearly, the enemy is along this ridge. The advance guard platoon is firing from here. The other platoons are under cover in these positions. Your platoon will move along this route to this line of departure for the main attack. Your troop commander issues his orders here. 
After the platoon leaders have received orders from the troop commander, they rejoin their platoons where as many as possible are informed of the situation in order to coordinate the attack. Although an entire troop is making this attack, for the present we will confine ourselves to the movements of your platoon, which is making the main attack on the enemy's flank. Protected by a covering detachment, it moves under cover toward the position from which the dismounted attack will be made. A light machine gun squad has been attached. Due to lack of cover, the mounted approach must end here. At this time, the covering detachment is sent to the flanks in order to observe the enemy and to provide security during the change from the mounted to the dismounted approach. Lead horses are held mobile and the sets of fours dispersed under cover of the trees. At this time, dismounted scouts continue forward to establish a firing line and observe the enemy position. In the meantime, your platoon continues moving forward in the dismounted approach conducted by the platoon sergeant. The scouts make every effort to conceal their presence from the enemy in order to allow you to make a surprise attack. You see the enemy. Take cover while your platoon leader continues forward to make his personal reconnaissance. Show me the enemy position by pointing your rifle. You, as a scout, might fire tracer bullets to indicate the enemy position to your leader. But in this case, firing would give away your position and thereby kill the element of surprise. Therefore, you indicate the enemy's flanks by pointing with your rifle. Messenger. Yes, sir. Go back and bring the platoon sergeant and the three squad leaders forward. Yes, sir. There's an enemy in position on that ridge over there. We will attack and seize that ridge. Corporal Stahl, put your machine guns on that point and support our attack. Open fire when you're ready. Corporal Searle, you will attack up that draw. Corporal Carr, you will attack up that tree line. Corporal Evans, you will follow Corporal Carr squad at 75 yards in support. Sergeant Dunbar, you will go with Corporal Searle's squad to coordinate the attack. I will be with the support. Are there any questions? Sir, do I have any protection on my left? Send a two-man patrol out to your left flank. Any other questions? Move out. After having received instructions of what to do, how to do it, and where to do it, you move to suitable firing positions and attack as directed. You fight by firing and advancing. Your firing is to permit you to close with the enemy. You advance from one critical point to another by infiltration, sneaking one man through at a time. Or you advance by using a covered approach, such as this draw. Or you advance over comparatively open country by squad or half-squad rushes. When one squad is held up, another squad assists by advancing or by flanking action. For example, if a squad has been held in support, as in this case, the support squad may be used to outflank resistance. A squad that has been held up may be placed in support or required to sideslip to more favorable terrain. While your platoon is making the main attack, the third platoon moves up mounted to reinforce your platoon. Likewise, your attack will be reinforced and assisted by the remaining squads of the machine gun platoon, which will cover your advance by fire. The 50 caliber machine guns will be used against enemy machine guns, while the light machine guns pin the enemy to the ground. To illustrate, the machine gun platoon supports the attack of the first platoon and your platoon from here. The third platoon begins the assault from this point to the enemy position. During this time, the first platoon, which constituted the advance guard of the troop, continued pressing forward from its original position. Here's your platoon again. You have just finished the firefight, which was the period when you were firing and advancing. 
You are now beginning the assault. The assault is that phase of the attack in which you close with the enemy in hand-to-hand -hand combat. The success of your assault is determined by the guts that you have and your willingness to close with the enemy and kill him. When your assault commences, machine gun fire ceases or is lifted. The machine guns are then moved forward to the objective that you have captured. Once you have killed or driven the enemy out of his position, you will immediately reorganize and prepare to resist enemy counterattack. Reorganization is necessary because some men have been killed or wounded. Your machine guns are put into position to fire. Combat and reconnaissance patrols are sent immediately to the front and flanks in order to guard against surprise and to maintain contact with the enemy. Remove the ammunition from the dead and wounded and redistribute it among those who are still capable of fighting. Non-coms are replaced and squads regrouped. The platoon leader reports the strength of the platoon to the troop commander. Having successfully routed the enemy, secured the position, reorganized and reconnoitered the enemy's new position, you prepare for further combat. 